The New York Times list of best-selling books is often cited as a barometer of America's current preoccupations. And topping the list this week, and this is nonfiction, is a book about one man's encounter with beings from outer space. Now, if you're the kind of skeptic I am, you'll be saying unlikely. But according to a Gallup poll in February, nearly half of all Americans, 49%, are convinced that UFOs are real, although they weren't asked who or what they thought was inside them. But that might be the key question the next time there's a poll taken. You know, UFOs have been with us for at least 40 years, but never has so much attention been paid to reports that not only are people meeting alien life forms, but in some cases they're claiming to have been abducted by them. Given the public interest and the new books that seem to be coming out every week, we asked Lynn Sure to investigate. Have they arrived? Judge for yourself. It wasn't really emanating red light. It was just red. Red creature, you know? It was red, fiery looking. I saw a UFO, that's all. It was huge and gigantic eyes. Oh, this thing grabbed me, my right arm. I looked across the field, and I saw something glinting, and I, it was a large silver object. I call it a ship. Uh, just stopped in midair. And it was in the shape of, like a boomerang almost. And it just stopped, just floating, hovering. Go ahead, say what you think. These people are just dreaming, right? They only think they saw alien creatures and spacecraft from another planet. They only imagined the bright lights and the little men. After all, they've got no proof. Well, you may be right. But that hasn't stopped a number of people from buying their stories over the years. And today, the subject matter is selling again. A new group of books about UFO experiences has landed in the stores. And they all center on encounters Earthlings say they have had with visitors from other worlds. To one police psychologist, it should have been predictable. That, uh, these very interesting uh, kinds of phenomena like UFOs and psychics and hypnosis uh, have about a 20-year cycle as I observe it. Now where is one? Right there. Okay, where? That's a star. Just this spring, a two-week-long recurrence of blinking lights in the night sky brought residents of a town near Louisville, Kentucky, out for regular hilltop watches. No one has yet explained the blinking lights, but they captivated the local townspeople. I'd like for them to come to the house and have a drink. <laughs> this fascination with UFOs seems remarkably resilient. Even when the Air Force shut down its UFO investigations, Project Blue Book, in 1969, at least 700 such sightings remained that could not be explained away. Since that time, as these pictures seem to show, strange lights and unidentified flying objects have continued to captivate us. Uh, 1628, Roger, do you have, uh, can you identify the aircraft? Perhaps the best publicized of the recent sightings was made by a Japanese airline captain last fall. Piloting flight 1628 into Anchorage, he radioed to a controller in Alaska that he had another craft at the same altitude. Roger, sir, say the color of the strobe in uh, beacon lights. The color White and yellow, thank you. At one point, military and FAA radar seemed to confirm the target. Yeah, that's one last two again. And some other equipment over here, we have confirmed there is a flight size of two around your 1550 squawk. But when the controller sent a nearby United flight over to investigate, that pilot was unable to confirm the sighting. The uh, Japan airliner is silhouetted against a uh, light sky. I don't see anybody around him at all. I can't see his sky. Although the pilot stuck to his story, the FAA was unable to confirm or deny it. Did you hear the engine? More than two years earlier, a group of private pilots flew in V formation over New York's Hudson Valley for several nights to try to prove an earlier setting there had been a hoax. But that didn't fool the couple who made this home video. When they passed overhead, you can very clearly hear the engine noises. Even though they were flying in a V, one or two planes would be out of sync and they'd have to hurry up to catch up. Yeah, and there's a red one tail. Bob and Lori Pizzuoli are sure they captured pictures of a UFO on that same tape after the pilots tried their prank. He was walking the dog. I was in the kitchen and he called for me. I came out and right away we all yelled, get the camera, get the camera. Whatever it is, it's very, very bright. It's a different color. Oh, good God. I'll, I'll be t I'm going to tell you something, honey. 
I don't know what the hell it is. 30 miles away, Monique O'Driscoll continues to paint the same V-shaped ship that was reportedly seen by hundreds of people in New York and Connecticut. I just kept looking at it, and another car went by, and it was a woman uh, with a gentleman that I, I know, I knew the woman, and she said, Monique, we were following it, and then it disappeared. And I said, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And she says, I can't believe what, what we're seeing either. It's got to be something from outer space. If you find those accounts hard to believe, listen to the latest claims from a growing number of people who say they not only saw alien spacecraft and met extraterrestrials and sketched them, but were kidnapped by them. I believe that I was abducted by a UFO and taken inside and given some sort of examination. That is the sort of case that has turned this man, Bud Hopkins, an accomplished artist and sculptor, into a UFO investigator. He has written two books on the subject, the latest called Intruders. It deals specifically with people who say they have had abduction experiences and with the possibility of humans being used in genetic experiments by extraterrestrials. Do you believe that the people you are dealing with have been abducted and taken into alien spacecraft? Uh, I've dealt with 135 people, and I would say uh, that in a large number of those cases, I have absolutely not the shadow of a doubt that they've had these experiences. I, I've, I've seen someone share a drawing with another abductee and say, this is what the eyes look like, and that person would look at it and burst into tears. You can feel your body relaxing. You can feel your body becoming peaceful. This is how Bud Hopkins does much of his investigation. Now we're going to go back a little bit in time. You can see the clothes that you wore. You can see yourself in the mirror. He hypnotizes subjects whose memory of their UFO experiences is cloudy. In this case, Jim, who did not want his true identity disclosed, is reliving an obviously frightening encounter he says happened when he was a child. I don't know if this thing grabbed me. My right arm. It's a long time ago and very disturbing at the time but you can look back at it very coolly now I feel like you'd rather die I'd rather be dead than be going through this Hopkins manner of dealing with his subjects is soothing and reassuring many like Connie Morgan come to him because the abduction experiences they remember are like the ones he talks about I read the newspaper article about you mm -hmm. and uh, my being is different mm -hmm. than the ones described in the paper. Um, it's about three and a half to four feet tall. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was laughing at myself when I saw this thing because I thought all those jokes about green Martians, yeah. you know, the little men. The green men, yes. Well, here's some... Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> that looks real familiar. <laughs> Bonnie, wake up. Is his name? The abduction phenomenon came to widespread attention in the early 1960s with a New Hampshire couple named Betty and Barney Hill. This television movie recreated the event. The object is on the ground. It was one of the first known cases using hypnosis to recall a UFO abduction. As the Hills told it, they were walked over to a spacecraft where they underwent some kind of physical examination. And then I was put on a table, and they tried to insert a needle-like instrument in my navel, but it caused pain, so they stopped doing it. And they said it was a pregnancy test, and I said, this is 1961, that's no pregnancy test here, because now it is, but in those days, it was unheard of. The story gained even more attention with the star map Betty Hill drew while under hypnosis. It depicted a group of stars whose relative position was not widely known until five years later. Do you think there is any possibility that it was just a fantasy, that it didn't happen? Oh, we tried that one. It didn't work. <laughs> this is Christina Florence. She says she would like to believe her UFO experience was just a fantasy. I'd love it if it was a fantasy. It would be much easier to deal with if I could say, yes, I'm crazy. This is all not real. She came to Hopkins reluctantly to explore something she's not ready to accept. Her memory of seeing a UFO, a large silver object, as a child, twice. Those are my conscious recollections, and that's all I can say really happened. However, under hypnosis, surprisingly enough, other things came out which, which indicate that maybe some sort of 
person or people from another world came and took my sister and I and sort of looked us over and did a few experiments. It's sort of like a, a dummy birth. It's like mm -hmm. fake, but the baby's real and they're real and I'm real, but... You are listening to an audio tape of one of Chris's hypnosis sessions with Bud Hopkins. Under his probing, she and other women told of being shown babies by aliens. The implication? That the babies were theirs. The result of reproductive experiments conducted by the space creatures. Something Chris doesn't want to believe. If Bud wants to conclude that, if, if people reading Bud's book feel that that's conclusive, then that's one thing. But I, myself, do not want to believe that any of this has any connection. Hopkins wasn't sure about some of the things he was hearing either, so he started consulting experts. Dr. John Berger is a practicing obstetrician gynecologist who has interviewed some of Hopkins' subjects and listened to tapes of hypnotic sessions and the medical techniques described. I was intrigued with how much sense it all made. It was so clinical and so precise that it made me jolt and think, perhaps this really was was true. It's like a numbness. Mm -hmm. 2020 found an expert too, Dr. Martin Reiser, a psychologist and hypnosis consultant with the Los Angeles Police Department. He pointed out that hypnosis mm -hmm. is not a lie detector, mm -hmm. that under hypnosis a subject can believe something is true that is not. We asked him to review yeah, some yeah, tapes of Bud Hopkins good. hypnosis sessions with Chris and Connie. Does Bud Hopkins seem to be exerting undue influence on his people? I think that what he really communicates to the subject is, yes, these things do happen, and what you're experiencing is very common. And I think in that respect, uh, it communicates to the individual that there's no question that these things exist. These cases are so outrageous, uh, that, and the person feels so uncomfortable talking about them, that unless you assure that person by your manner that you believe them, you will not get the story. I think that much of what was uh, felt and perceived by these two subjects could be explained in rational, reasonable ways that don't have to involve UFOs or UFO experiences. For instance? Well, for instance, uh, childhood memories that get mixed up with later memories, dream material. You've now written two books on the subject. Do you consider yourself an unbiased investigator? I'm one of the few who actually has the information to be objective. The idea of total objectivity is always a myth anyway, I think, for, for anyone. I'm, I'm not sitting there like a, a, a kind of a, a totally neutral surface against which everything is bouncing off. I, I do have some sort of uh, obvious rapport with the person. Hi, bud. <laughs> Hopkins also points out that his investigations go beyond hypnosis, that he interviews friends and relatives and other witnesses, and even sends samples of earth and grass allegedly touched by alien craft to laboratories. He's even noted a connection among scars found on supposed UFO abductees. Theoretically, evidence of alien examinations and experiments. But Hopkins says he wouldn't be doing any of this if someone else, like the government, were. Remember, in 1969, the Air Force shut down the only publicized federal investigation into UFOs, Project Blue Book. But a number of documents obtained by government critics under the Freedom of Information Act suggest that investigations not part of the Blue Book system may have continued under such code names as MJ-12 and Project Aquarius. In a number of books and articles, critics have charged that the government is covering up UFO sightings and related information under the guise of national security. We asked the Air Force to comment on these charges. They refused. And while the controversy goes on, Bud Hopkins continues his independent investigations of those people who claim to have been abducted. These are suffering people. They're not crazy. Of course, what is at issue is whether the UFO abduction experiences are real. And I, my idea is that simply that the evidence is so powerful that someone has got to say, okay, I'll look into it, if, if not just to try to blow it out of the water. Hmm. Well, one thing is certain, we have not heard the end of it. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn.